Hi, today is December 14th, 2015. It's 12.09 p.m. and I'd like to show you a web page that I made. In my documents library I have a folder called Brainy. If you go in that folder, this is the only thing that we've got. All of these MP3 files that you see here on the left and on the right are lecture videos from MIT Open Courseware. It happens to be a lecture, uh, different lectures on the brain. And um, I have two images, JPEG images. One, if I click on it, it's a, a software edited photo of me using some kind of editing tool on my cell phone for pictures. And I have an image of my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters, Amani only two images that I have. All of these are lectures again. I have um, a web page called cover.html which is right here open in Notepad++. It's a very simple page. There's the HTML opening and closing tags. There's the head opening and closing tags. Inside the head I have a style and very simple style for the body is text aligned center, margin zero pixels, padding zero pixels. And the body, the only thing I have in the body is an image tag. Image with the source being the amani.jpg file that I just opened up with my granddaughter. And I gave that image a height of 100%. Very simple page. If I run just that page, I'll launch it in Firefox. You see the picture of my granddaughter. And based on the height of the window, her image just gets smaller with the window but keeps the aspect ratio. So the picture is never too big or too small for the window size. Okay, let me get back to where I was. Yeah, this cover page that's called Cover HTML again, depending on the size of the screen my picture automatically fills it up and keeps its aspect ratio. And I took this cover page and I created, basically I copied and pasted and created one, a page called 2.html and if I run that it's the exact same thing except the image source is, is the me.jpg instead of the amani.jpg. See I have amani right here and I've got me right here and same thing if I run this Launch it in Firefox. There's um, kind of an animated looking image of me. Uh, I edit it with some kind of editing software that's on my cell phone to give it this cartoony look. And the same thing. You know, it's not the exact same size that the Imani picture was, but based on the height of the window, it's going to stretch or contract. All right, let me get out of there. Um, so I showed you the cover page. I showed you the two, uh, the page called two, cover.html, two.html. Uh, I showed you the JPEG image of me and the JPEG image of Amani. Now the only thing I've got left, other than all these MP3 lectures, is openbrainy.html, which is right here. Now, I'm going to take that off of there. And I'm going to minimize this. And let me run this page, openbrainy.html. I'm going to open it in Firefox. OK, Firefox is not responding. So, oh, now it is. Beginning HTML tag, and of course at the very bottom, there's the ending HTML tag. And this is a note that I gave myself. I used the comment, the uh, less than sign, exclamation point, dash, dash, and at the end of it, dash, dash, greater than sign. That makes everything a comment and gives it green. This is how you open uh, multiple iframes from a single link. Because originally when I made this, 
my first link opens up the MIT site itself in a new tab and then all the rest of these links would open up the first lecture and it would open up the lecture up here but this page right here in this iframe would always stay the same it would either be my it would be my cover.html that no matter what you clicked the cover would stay the same but I wanted that every time you clicked this it would do something different well obviously this is going to open up MIT in a new tab but this one uh, I want to show how you can open up the lecture up here and a new picture down here so I wound up looking up the code because I don't ha I didn't have it memorized I looked up the code to open up two iframes or three or four depending on how you set up your web page and and I got the code here so that anytime I want to do that with a web page I have this as a reference and I don't have to look it up over and over again um, so back to the code HTML here's my head tag and there's the end of the head tag and inside my head I have a title that says brainy that shows right up here brainy in the browser tab then I have a style and the style goes from here to there and then I have the end of the head that's all that the head has and then I've got a little comment here that says iframe with the ID of A is for the audio snippets which that's this up here and the iframe with the ID of B is for the images which is down here I have a style for the field set the field set is this section right here you see brainy that's the legend inside the field set and then it's all of this background here that goes all the way down and if you scroll down it stops down here it's basically the background it, it holds all of these list items and links that are inside the list items and that field set has a width of 250 pixels uh, background color of pink border radius of 20 pixels that gives us the roundness if I change the background color to orange that'll give you uh, a precise idea of the field set element itself which actually bled it actually bled into the list item because I I gave the list item um, a border of thick pink ridge which you can't really tell but the border stayed pink but I guess if I want my list item to maintain the background color of pink I have to indicate that in its own style now there we go now the list item shows is pink and I wanted you just to see that what the field set was itself I don't think orange and pink looks too too bad it's pretty colorful um, hmm I really don't want it to be orange though maybe maroon let's see what that looks like yeah I think that looks a little better with pink okay anyway um, then I've got the OL which is the ordered list I set that to display in line list style type none and text align to left if I took the list style type off by putting a Z in front of it and misspelling it then I don't know why this should be a one a two a three and a four outside you can barely see it but there's all these ones and I'm not sure why they're all ones instead of uh, numbers that go in order but in any event I set it to list style type none because I didn't want my numbers way out here I wound up just putting the numbers in myself in the link text so let me take that off um, text align left my legend is this part right here that says brainy I gave it a style of styles border thick pink ridge border radius 20 pixels background color white padding 5 pixels and a font weight of bold so that's this part it says brainy I could give it a larger I could give it a larger font size 
So besides being bold, I could give it a, a very large font size of 30 pixels. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'll leave that. The list item um, is this. When I hover my mouse over, it turns white. The list item is only this rounded rectangle. It's not the link itself. It's not the checkbox. It's only this thing that turns white. And this is its set of styles. Margin bottom 5 pixels, padding 5 pixels, border radius 20 pixels, border thick pink ridge, background color pink, height 400, or no, I'm sorry, 40 pixels. And then to get that shadow that you really can't see that well since, since I gave this uh, a maroon dark color back here. Maybe if I made that field set gray instead, you might see the, um, the shadow a little better. You can see the shadow a little better if I do that, so maybe I'll leave it gray. All of these styles right here, there's three types. Uh, web kit box shadow, Moz box shadow, and box shadow. And they all have 2 pixels, 0 pixels, 11 pixels, 7 pixels, and RGBA values of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.75. So if you change any of these numbers or any of these values, it will change how the shadow uh, shows up. Then I've got the LI hover, the list item hover, background color white. When I'm hovering over it, it, it turns white. If I change that background to something else like lime, then when I hover over it, oh, I have to hit refresh the page first. Then when I hover over it, you get that lime color instead. But that makes it a little too loud for me, so I'm going to go back to white. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, then I've got two special styles here. Pound A means ID A, and pound B means ID B. I use the pound symbol in the style itself, and then down here, um, where my where my iframes are, I use the word ID equals, and then the name of the ID. Here's the ID B for that iframe. And for this iframe, you got IDA. That's how I, that's how this one gets styled, and that's how this one gets styled. So let me go back up to the style. For A, I have a background color of pink, a border radius of 20 pixels, padding of 5 pixels, and margin of 5 pixels. If I change this ID from background color of pink to background color of yellow, you'll see which iframe it's referring to. It's this one up here. So I'm going to change A back to pink. And then for IDB, we've got a border of 10 pixels, black inset, text align center. If I change this 10 pixels black inset to 30 pixels um, gray ridge. Then you see how we get this totally different border for this ID, which this is a div that actually uh, is going to hold this iframe. but I want to change it back to what it was. So I'm going to put my insertion point in here and I'm going to hit Control Z a, a few times over and over again until I get what I started with. 10 pixels of black inset. Okay, now my div is back to the way I had it. And that ends the styles for this page. Now I gave myself this note that I read already that iframe ID A is for the audio snippets up here and iframe ID B is for the images right here. There's the body. 
Now we're going to actually talk about the elements that you see on this page. The elements, the element tags themselves. Not the way we style them in the head, but the tags that actually create uh, the elements themselves. So here's the field set and it goes from here all the way to the end pr pretty much of the page. I take that back. Here's the end of the field set. Because then we have the div right here, uh, a div itself that holds both iframes, that iframe and that iframe. You can't see, it says, uh, actually I z'd out a border to the div. If I, re if I take the z off so the border is spelled correctly, you'll see, you see the very fine black border around it. That's a div that holds the two iframes, this iframe and that iframe. I didn't want to see the border on the finished product, but sometimes it's good when you're creating a web page and you've got stuff put in different divs. Sometimes it's good to go on ahead and put a border on that so that you can see you can see the uh, placement of where your different elements are going to go. And then you can always just misspell it by putting a Z in front of it just to take that border off for the end result. Whether you keep a border or don't keep a border is completely up to you. But that div is holding these two frames. But first I'm going to go over this navigation, which is in the field set. The field set is being used kind of as a container, kind of as a div, but it's a field set and so it's its own element. I like field sets because you can use this legend and get an automatic caption to whatever you're putting in this section. But I don't need an automatic caption for my I could have it if I wanted to, but I, I didn't want to. Uh, plus, there's different things uh, by using an iframe that you can do, which I'm not sure if you can do with a field set, or maybe I don't. I've never tried it with a field set. But let's get back to the top of the body. Field set, legend says brainy. If I put a couple Z's in front of that, and you see how my legend changes. Changes the text inside of the legend tags. Here's our OL for ordered list. And that goes all the way down to the end of the list. Right here. Right before the end of the field set. Now everything in here that turns white when I hover over it, all of these are list items. And inside of every list item is an AREF tag which links to it's a link we start off with li here's the beginning this is the opening li tag and this is the closing li tag in the opening li tag we have an on click event so we use the on click keyword equals and then everything in the double quotes is what happens when you click when you click this well, if I click this, not the link itself, not the words with a line under it, but if I just barely get this sucker to turn white and I click it, look, it stays white. So the on-click event for the list item itself is style.backgroundcolor equals white, and then you have uh, a semicolon, and then you have the statement return true and another semicolon. You have to put white in single quotes because all of this stuff uh, for the on-click event is in double quotes. And when you're doing code, you have to alternate your single quotes and double quotes. Otherwise, if this were a double quote and this were a double quote right here, the, the computer would get confused and think that this belongs in double quotes. But that's not the case. White is its own separate entity so it gets its own double quotes and then this entire statement for the on click event is all uh, nested in these double quotes so single quotes and double quotes uh, semicolons and everything else is very important with your placement okay so that created just the fact that I clicked on it and it made it uh, turn white then I have this checkbox right here um, that says input type equals checkbox name equals I didn't set the name I didn't set a name to it and a value to it um, but I did give it this attribute of checked 
If I misspell checked by putting a Z in front of it and save it and then refresh the page, you see that this shows up um, unchecked. You also see that this did not stay white. The click event uh, after refresh, you have to click it again in order for it to be white again. But the fact that I left this checked in the code means to me I know that I've read, uh, not read, but I've, I've actually listened to this particular lecture. Um, I take that back. This first one doesn't take me to a lecture. It takes me to the website itself. Uh, so I showed you the list item beginning tag and what happens if you click it. It's got a non-click event. It turns it white. And I showed you how to make a checkbox and how to make it appear checked or unchecked by either spelling checked before the end of the input tag or misspell it or don't even put the word checked in there at all and it'll be unchecked. Um, but now I want to show you the link. This is how you make a link. And here's the, the all of this with a background of yellow is the opening link tag. Not Don't get link and list item confused. A ref is always going to link something and LI is just a list item. It's like if you made a grocery list. But A ref does something and here is a big long address that takes us to MIT free courseware. Uh, so a ref equals in double quotes this long address, this long web address, target equals underscore blank means it's going to open in a new tab. It's going to open up here and then title equals, this is if I wanted to make a tool tip, something that when I hover over this link, it'll pop out and tell me what it is. You see right here that because how, because this window is smashing this div over top of the navigation area, you can't read brain behavior, you can't read the whole thing. So if I put, if I take the actual link right here, brain behavior studies MIT site, which is what this says, you just can't see it. If I copy that and put it inside there, title equals brain behavior studies MIT site, and then I save that and I refresh the page. What happens is when I uh, hover over this, you get a tooltip that actually lets you read the entire thing, the part that you cannot read. That's what the title tag will do for you. And I don't have the title set to any of these other things, so I don't get that pop-up every time. But if I wanted a pop-up every time, that's how I would do it. I would do it just like that. Title equals something in double quotes. And, of course, what you see what the viewer sees, Brain Behavior Studies, MIT site, is inside that, uh, is right before the closing A tag. So let's click it, and you see a tab opens, and you see MIT Open Courseware, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and here you get, you get to pick any kind of courses, course by topic, by course number, by department. This is all free stuff for anybody who's interested in, uh, in listening to it and learning things which is pretty cool. Um, so there's the end of the link itself and the end of the LI list item tag. Again I gave myself, the, this is the same this is the same comment that I gave myself uh, way down here under the whole web page. I, I originally saved it down here as a note to myself, but then I was working with my code right here and I wanted this in front of me so that I could refer to it as I changed it down here. So I just gave myself a note, the same note in two different places. Not needed, just something I was doing. This is the second list item. That's this one that we're on now. And if I click on it, it's got the same thing going on. The on-click event style dot background color equals white return true. If I were to change this particular list item, which would be totally inconsistent with the look of the web page, but if I change that to red and saved Notepad++ and refreshed the page, you click this, it's still going to be white. You click this and you're going to get red. 
if you wanted to be really strange you could have every single one of these a different color and you would I don't know maybe you might want to do that if if there was a colorization that would categorize particular things uh, let's see if you if you did this and let's say all red tags had to do with exercise and when you click on it you know that everything you click on that ends up with a red tag has to do with exercise everything with a green tag has to do with money everything with a, a blue tag has to do with I don't know swimming I don't know you might that might be the only reason I could think of other than just making it look really random that you would intentionally give different uh, colorization to these things or you could even start off it doesn't have to be a click event you could start off giving these their own special background color uh, again if you were putting them in certain types of categories um, that would be specific to certain certain topics but I'm not using that as any type of functionality I just wanted to show you how the click event background color would work so now this background color is white this background color is white and every single thing is, is consistent because that's how this page is working um, then again input type equals checkbox I didn't do anything with the name or the value but I left it there in case I'm going to use it in the future uh, and it's checked that means that I have read uh, I'm sorry I have looked at this website and I have listened to this introduction up here our AREF link went to an internet web page and the target was blank meaning a new tab in the browser this is different whereas the AREF here is going to go to an mp3 file lecture l1.mp3 for lecture 1.mp3 here the target instead of being underscore blank I guess I can take this off now so I mean I'd still have it saved at the bottom of the page so I don't need it in two places but this way I can show you the difference between this uh, link and this one this link again has that long web page this link has an mp3 file this target is underscore blank which opens in a new tab this target says a which happens to be the name of this iframe so in when you click this we're gonna get lecture one in here the, the uh, audio player and it does I did not set the title so when I hover over this we don't get a pop-up like we do up here here we get a pop-up here we don't because I, I set the title to nothing the we have a non-click event now in the list item itself I gave it a, a non-click event which meant when I click on the list item it turns white but here this on this on click event is inside of the a ref tag which is the link tag so when you actually click the underlined text what you're gonna get is well first of all you get the mp3 up here second of all you get window dot B which is this the name of this iframe window.b.location that's where the where this location is dot ref now we're talking about ref which we're talking about a link again is equal to 2.html now if you remember I showed you this cover.html had nothing but a style in the head and in the body a single image well I created this 2.html that basically was a copy and paste of cover but the only difference was I put the image of me in it in the body so what happens is for this second one you know let me refresh this page so that the so that since this is the one I'm talking about I'll click on it so you understand I'm always talking about this particular link right here um, so when I click this this turns white but when I click this a lecture audio is going to come up here and a different page is going to open up here my 2.html and so 
that's the whole statement right there window.b.location.ref equals 2.html semicolon and then the statement return true semicolon and all of that in the double quotes is the on click event inside the opening a ref tag then you have one slash introduction which is what you physically see right here one slash introduction if I put a bunch of big Z's after that and saved it and refreshed the page you see all those Z's show up so I don't really want that I just wanted you to see okay but I am talking about it uh, let me move down there's the end a ref tag the end of the list item so now let's see what happens when I click the underlined a ref a ref really don't know how to say that watch there's the new image the new the 2.html page and this l1.mp3 audio file you can't probably can't hear it but I hear the professor talking in the background you can see the timer moving here 20 seconds 21 22 so on and so forth this is a 39 minute mp3 lecture each of these lectures are fairly long um, so that gives us that and all of these subsequent list items are done exactly the way this one is the only difference is that um, the only difference is I have not I've not given the a ref link an on click event to change the image here in all the rest of them but it would be so simple for me to do that all I would have to do would be to take this section right here copy it just the on click event the on click equals and then the uh, everything that's in the double quotes including the double quotes and put it right before this greater than sign right before whatever the link is so here is the link that you click on and here's the greater than sign that finishes the opening tag I could put this right there and then Control V to give this a ref its own on click event and then I could take this and change it from the picture of me back to the picture of my granddaughter because she had her picture is in the web page called cover.html so if I do this and save it refresh the page this opens up the MIT site in the tab this okay hold on let me try this again launching Firefox fresh this is gonna uh, the original thing that opens up in this tab uh, I mean in this iframe is the cover.html and I haven't got to that yet but that's further down when you get past all of these links which I guess I can go ahead and show you now anyway because I don't need to go over every one of these links because they're all coded the same way the values are just different here's the end this is the last list item that means that is this 30 auditory system 30 auditory system the a ref is l33.mp3 the target is a which is this iframe I didn't give it a title um, the input type checkbox name equals nothing value equals nothing we've got a Z in front of this which means I did not listen to that lecture so this checkbox is showing as unchecked after that whole field set this whole thing that's got the background of gray I have a div which starts this div right here next to it it's got a, a style right inside the divs beginning tag and all of that style is uh, enclosed in double quotes so it's got a width of 75 percent so depending on how big this whole window is this section this div is going to be 75 percent of the page 
uh, it had a border of thin black solid, but I Z'd it out so I wouldn't be able to see that. Take the Z off again and run it. Now you see the black border going around it. And if you change your mind and don't want the border, just put Z in front of it. And the code is there if you change your mind. It's as easy as removing a Z or adding a Z instead of retyping stuff. It's got a padding of 10 pixels. If I change that padding to 40 pixels, let's see what happens. See, this space right here, from here to here, is the padding. So, uh, just to give you an idea of where the padding is and how that works, we'll change it from 40 to 10. It's got a height of 95%. It's 95% of the page. Position is fixed. Position fixed means that as you go up and down with your scroll bar, these two things in this div are not moving. They're not going anywhere. The only thing that's moving is our navigation to the left. We have top of 8 pixels, which means, do you see right here when I hover over this cellular, how you can see pink? So from the top of this new div to the top of the window where you see this pink going above it, that's supposed to be 8 pixels. Uh, right, 10 pixels. So from, well, let me put the uh, border back on here so you can see the border. Supposedly from uh, the black border here to the very end of this window before you see the scroll bar, that should be 10 pixels. And the background color is white. If I change the background color to green, you will see everywhere the div is. See? So that's, that's the div. That's the div that's holding our two iframes. Now, this iframe up here, the style for this iframe, this ID for this first iframe is A. We go back up to the styles in the head. We gave it a background color, a background color of pink. But this one, this B, we didn't give it a background color. So the reason it's green is because we didn't give it its own specific background color, which means it's going to adopt the background color of the div that it's inside of. So that's why it's green. If you didn't want it to adopt that same color, you would have to give that special ID its own background color as well. Let's give it a background color of, I don't know, white. but you may actually like for it to adopt the background color. You might want the background color to be black. Let's see what that looks like. You might like that better. Or you might put an X in, or a Z in front of that to misspell background color and again it will adopt the background color of the div that it's in. And again, you may not want... Let's go back to that div. Where is it? Background color of green. Uh, you can turn that back to white or whatever color you want. If you Z out the background color of this div, it's transparent. And that's strange. You may or may like to add that feature to something on your web page. It might look cool to you. Um, I think it makes it look messy. So I'm going to let it keep a background color, but that's what happens if you don't give it a background color because you've got these elements overlay overlapping each other. Another thing you could do that is uh, use opacity, which is interesting. So if we go to a new tab and I just um, 
underscore CSS for style, you know cascading style sheets, and I use and I click on the word opacity. Then let's go with to the W3 schools. You've got opacity here of 0.5. So in the div, we gave it a style. Let's see what happens if I just copy and paste this right inside of the style of the div, the opening. Let's just see what happens there. Let's see if that works. Let's go back to, let's get, get out of, let's just go back here. Now that gives us a slight transparency, but this gives us a slight transparency for everything in the div, including the picture of Amani. And I don't know if I necessarily like that. Um, how could I fix that? I could set the opacity for the IDA to another number. Let's try that. Let's see if Let's see, let me copy this opacity 0.5 to the style IDA up here in the head again. Right here. Okay, let me change that to 0.9 because I think the higher the number, the more solid. That actually didn't do anything. Or did it? Oh, I'm sorry. I think that changed. Did that change this up here? Let me see what it does to this. Point nine. I don't think that did anything and I'm making my video too long. Let me just get that out of there. Let me get out of the list items, go back to my last, my div right here. I'm going to Z that out for now and I'm going to play with it later. Because what I'm going to play with is I'm going to see if I can play with just this div background having opacity but I don't want this part or this part to have opacity because I want her image to remain solid and not faded but I wouldn't mind having this little out this little border right here having that feature because it just gives it a, a cool kind of look being able to see through to the di to the list item below it okay uh, then we've got the next tag and it's the iframe itself. This is the div and here's the iframe. We gave this ID of A, name of A, nothing in the source, scrolling auto frame border 1, height 70 with 95 percent and there's the end of the iframe. I'm sorry this iframe is this pink one up here because it had the ID of A. It, it's, not, it's not this one. And, here's, and here is this one at the bottom. Frame with the IDB and the name of B, source, cover, dot HTML. That's pulling out the page that has the picture of my granddaughter. It's pulling out this page right here. Height 85% with 95%, style is text align center, end of iframe, end of div, end of body, end of HTML. And that's the whole page itself. If I go back to, remember this was our first LI, this is opening up MIT. And there is MIT OpenCourseWare. And get out of there. If I open up my second list item, it's going to give me a lecture and a new image. And I don't want to hear that right now. And if I, here's my third list item, I click on that. It's going to give me the next lecture and it's going to switch back to my original cover.html.
So if I made an HTML, you know, I've got the cover, I've got this one that's got a picture of me, I can put copy and paste more, more and more different pictures so that each time I click on this, it's going to open up something different in here while you listen to what's up here. I'm going to stop that. Um, the different uses you can have for this is, let's say you, maybe, maybe this is for recipes. You click on a link, it opens up things that you say, you know, maybe you're reading about the recipe, maybe you're reading how to do it, and then down here you have a web page that tells you the ingredients and, and basically the recipe itself. Or you could have a picture of an event, you know, maybe it's somebody's birthday, and you have the birthday picture down here, and then you have everybody singing happy birthday to the person. So when you click on a link, this might be happy birthday grandma, and you click on it and you hear everybody singing happy birthday and a picture of grandma blowing out the candles. Kind of cute. Or what else could you do? You could click, uh, let's see, we got recipes, we got uh, family events, um, whatever you, a uh, cartoon, you might be artistic. Down here you create a cartoon. Up here you have some animation that goes to the cartoon. Uh, you could be a musician. Uh, you can click your link and up here one of your songs that you created is up here. And down here maybe an illustration for the song, an idea that you have for the song or a picture or an image, uh, you know, whatever you want. There's like so many things that, that you can do with this to make fun little projects that you could display, uh, that you could share with people and let them open and look at on their computer. Or if you have like Chromecast or any other way that you can cast onto your big screen TV, you could share it with them. And it's just, to me, it's kind of fun. It's just, uh, multimedia is fun. And this is a simple way to do it. You could also make this um, study. This could be a study guide for you. Each one of these pages that opens up down here could be notes for a particular subject. And up here could be your audio of whatever the subject is, whether you're reading what's down here or whether you're talking about any problems that you had or any questions or, or you're just lecturing. So that's it basically in a nutshell. It's a, a pretty simple project. Um, and I think I'm going to incorporate this a couple of different ways, but I just wanted to put the how-to to do it. It's relatively simple once you start getting into web page design and using things like color. Uh, one thing that you can do if you're not sure about colors looking nice or not. Um, let's see. HTML colors you can go hit HTML colors and you can pick any kind of web page that'll give you and these are all different types of grays obviously but whatever if you want to use four or five different shades of gray then you can come up here and uh, when you have background color I have I just use white well, let's say you want to use different shades of different colors you can use these values with a pound symbol in front of it instead. So let's say you were interested in this shade right here. Uh, instead of white, I would put pound 66CC66. So if I copy this, and right where I have background color white, I'm going to have, I'm going to paste it, call it control C for the, where the color was, and I'm going to put a pound symbol in front of that. Now this is going to colorize my legend so when I go back to here, instead of this background color being white, it's going to be this kind of green that I just picked when I refresh the page. So that when you say green or blue or red, you don't have to go with the most basic shade of that. All right, this is running this guy. I don't want to hear that right now. And there's a lot of websites that give you these codes for different shades. If I go back 
you've got this HTML color picker. I'm stuck right now. Color codes, web color chart, um, HTML color wheel. You can click on any of them. Where did it go? Let's try this Adobe Cooler color wheel. I think one of uh, my professors introduced us to the cooler. He liked the cooler wheel. And I forgot what it looks like, so let's click on it. Okay, so if you take this and move it around, you get these different shades. And down here is the hex code for this shade. 3B32 E8. If you click on this, this red is FF000. This kind of uh, mustard color is E8 ADOC. If I highlight it and copy it, E8 ADOC, and put that, replace that where that 66CC66 is, paste it, and save it in Notepad, go back to the tab, and refresh the page, then you get this mustard kind of orangey, mustardy kind of color. So it's fun just messing around with color schemes. Um, but I'm going to just stay with my standard white. Oh, and don't put a pound sign in front of a name white. You only use the pound sign when you're using those combinations. Okay, if you try to do this, I hope you have a good time doing it. It's fairly simple. HTML, head, title, style, end of head, body, field set, legend, OL for ordered list, LI with a non-click event, input of checkbox, checked, if you don't want it to appear checked, put a Z in front of it, and then the check will come off when you run it. A ref, which uh, gives you um, a link. There's the beginning A ref and the end A ref tag, and whatever words you put in between that are the words you're going to see. End of A, end of a list item. There's your second list item, a non click event, style background color equals white return true. There's that input type equals checkbox, name nothing, value nothing checked. Here's another A ref. Instead of giving us a web page, it's going to take us, uh, it's going to open up an MP3 file. Target equals A means it's going to open up an iframe that has a name of A. Title is the tooltip. We don't have a tooltip set, but we have the code there in case you want to give it one. This uh, link has a non click event that opens up uh, another item. Instead of just opening up this MP3 file, it's also going to open up. 2.html. So it's going to open up uh, an audio file and a different image that's in a different web page. Return true. Introduction is what you click on. End of A, end of LI. And this is repeated as many times as you want. And over and over and over again. All of these down here, like if I go to 7 synapses, whatever your last page that opens up in this iframe is, and you don't give it a new page to open up like I did in, in this one, then when we click 7, this is going to stay here. I'm going to keep that page. See, it only thing it did was open up a new lecture. And this will stay the same all the way across the board. This will stay the same until I click the one that gives me a page. Uh, which one is it? that one. I guess this is the one that changed my page. And that changed it. And so on and so forth. So that's all the functionality of this website. It's kind of a little cool idea. A lot of different things you can do with it. Study purposes or entertainment purposes. And that's it for this website. Website page video thing.